Welcome to another video. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to achieve a high level of certainty. Uh, and when I say a high level of certainty, I also mean a high level of accuracy when it comes to trading NASDAQ, US 30 or S&P 500. So essentially, I'll be breaking it down on how you can actually time your entries and how easy it can be for you to time your entries uh, when it comes to executing these, these uh indices right these us indices but of course when it comes to the direction guys remember i told you that we get our direction from fundamentals right that is our foundation that is our foundation that is paramount right that does not change we need to have an idea of our direction from fundamentals and if you're not sure how you can achieve that when it comes to trading indices watch the video that i'm gonna link up on top where i think i had titled that video how to get ahead of 99 percent of retail traders that video i give you an idea of essentially how it works but just to give you a summary of it it all has to do with interest rates because if interest rates are going up then it means that it, it it is impacting businesses and remember indices are just what are just a representative representation of a collective of businesses or of a collection of businesses and that is what the indices are that is what nasdaq is that is what that is what s&p 500 is that is what the us 30 is right just a representation of a collection of businesses so if businesses are not doing well because of high interest rates or are being impacted negatively then we'll see what indices also trading negatively if if the outlook is positive for businesses or they're expecting to do well in the future then you can expect what indices to also grow to also outperform right so it also ties with interest rates so if interest rates are going lower that means that it's, it's cheaper for businesses to borrow money and it's also cheaper in terms of the loan repayments on on, on the current debts that they hold so that would do what that will boost businesses or that will boost profit margins for businesses so that will cause businesses to do what to in increase in terms of share price in terms of earnings or profits and that will boost the the nasdaq your s p 500 your us 30 so that is essentially how you get the direction guys the true direction by that right of course you can look at a technical chart but what i'm trying to achieve here is for is to move you from a state of guessing to a state of knowing to a state of guessing what the market is gonna do guessing what which direction the market is heading to actually knowing which direction the market is heading in the medium to the long term based on your understanding of fundamentals and of course what i'm gonna show you in this video i'm so excited guys because uh when i when i started using this yeah it changed how 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 i actually timed my entries and how accurately uh, i became in terms of my entries it, it really dramatically increased uh, the accuracy that i had right so what what will what will i be showing you guys here i'll be showing you guys the vix right so you know how i like to do it guys i don't like to give you surface level uh it would be easy for me to just jump onto the chart and show you exactly what i want to show you guys but i need to give you a background story so you can have an understanding because i don't want you guys to share this with someone and someone asks you to explain it to them and you're like i don't know you're just showing them a chart no guys I need you to be able to know why you're using this and why it actually works right but essentially i'll be showing you guys the vix right so the vix uh let's just uh i just went on google to give you a technical uh, explanation of it uh, and then i'll explain it how how we, how we actually apply it in the markets right <clears throat> sorry guys so a vix is a ticker symbol of the popular name or, or and the popular name for the chicago board options exchange cboe that is chicago board options exchange volatility index so by volatility index or vix i'm not referring to what most people trade nowadays which is the synthetic indices which is the vix volatility or vix 75 vix no i'm not referring to that i'm referring to this right here when i say vix so uh it is it is uh, it, it it is a popular measure of the stock market's expectation of volatility based on s p 500 index right so it is a a measure or a popular measure of the stock market's expectation of volatility based on s p 500 index and then obviously if you see related markets you can obviously see it's all what it's all united states or u.s based indices as we have dow jones which is the us 30 s p 500 nasdaq and as you can see this is the actual chart of uh of of or, or a representation of a chart of uh vix right and you can see it is down it is negative but all the indices are up so it goes in the opposite direction of indices so whenever vix is going down indices go higher so whenever volatility or volatility based on the vix is increasing then indices go lower so that is essentially that is the first clue of how we actually use this right so now just to dive a bit deeper what is the primary use of 
uh, VIX, right? So it is to gauge sentiment, right? So it is it is a measure of uh, market sentiment, right? So by market sentiment, I mean the risk profile that we are in. And this splits into two, right? We have, uh, okay, let's make this, uh, let's make this straight. So we have risk on and we also have risk off, right? So we have risk on and we have risk off. So I'll just be quick on this. So, cause I know you're waiting and you, you eagerly wanting me to go to the charts and we'll go there in a second, but I need to break this down for you guys. Like I said, I don't want to give you guys surface level. I'm here to empower you guys with knowledge. And of course, give you something that you can use immediately after, after you've watched this video, what I'll show you on the technical analysis side, you'll be able to implement immediately when you're trading indices, right? And it will work for you. I'm, I guarantee you that it will. So back to market sentiment. So market sentiment, we have two types, right? We have risk on and we have uh, risk off, right? So risk, sorry guys. Uh, so risk on, and then on the other, on the other side, we have risk off, right? So essentially, risk on positive. Oh yeah, let, let's just let's just uh, let's do this. So risk on is positive, right? Uh, positive outlook, outlook, and then risk off. It's a negative outlook. So negative outlook, negative outlook, right? That is what we have when it comes to the two types of risk profiles, right? So risk on, positive outlook, risk off, negative outlook. Remember what I said. I said indices, if there's if there's a positive outlook on indices or on businesses, then indices go higher. This is what I'm, that is why I use these words positive outlook because I just spoke about it, right? So positive outlook, it means that what? It means that that is when investors are more encouraged to take on risk. So if they're expecting like, the economy to do well, and so if the economy is doing well, obviously businesses will be doing well. So those investors will start what? Pouring money into riskier assets. So in a risk on, in a risk on profile, that is where the, pos the outlook is positive. In a risk off, it is recessionary, right? So everything goes back to the to the lessons that I told that I told you guys about re re recessionary gap and inflationary gap, right? Inflationary gap, positive outlook. That is when we generally what have a stock market rising. Risk off. That is more of an inflationary gap where the outlook is dim. It is negative. There is a lot of pessimism, even with wars going on around the world. That is to a certain extent creating a what a risk off environment because we're not sure how how long they will take and how wide they can spread right as you can as you saw now even the us is getting involved because uh, last weekend three of their of their of their military uh, troops were actually killed right in a, in a, in a, from a, from a drone strike right and i think around 40 were injured so that is now spreading that is now dragging the us in, into the actual war so all those things create a negative outlook but that's not where i'm at i'm just here to show you guys where we actually getting this risk uh this risk on and risk off and where the volatility in the index actually comes into play so in a risk on right so in a risk on that's when investors are taking risk so in a risk on currencies that go up or, or or asset classes that go up so stocks so stocks uh we have stocks we have uh when it comes to currencies we have aud AUD, we have CAD, and we have um, who's the uh, NZD, right? So these are all commodity currencies, right? We have stocks, which is of course by stocks I mean even indices. I mean US 30, Nasdaq, S and P 500, and then we have AUD, we have CAD, we have NZD, right? So, so let, let's let's make them green, so that you you understand that they're actually going up. Oh, those are the ones that we focus on in a risk on environment, right? Because they expect it to do well. And then in a risk off environment, on the other hand, whenever there's uncertainty, there's fear and panic. Remember, markets or capital moves into safe haven assets. Safe haven assets, we, we're talking about, we have the USD, right? So, okay. So instead of stocks, we have bonds. So investments or capital goes into bonds. Why? Because bonds are safer. Uh, bonds are... Bonds, even though bonds bonds have a lower return in terms of interest, 
but then they are in terms of risk risk is low on in on the stocks risk is high but they have they have what they have a greater return compared to bonds so in terms of in ter in times of uncertainty capital is placed into bonds because they risk they they less risky even though they offer less in terms of return but they less risky right so we have bonds and then in terms of currencies we have us dollar uh, we have jpy and we have chf right so essentially okay we can also add here we can also add a lot uh, another one here we can also add gold right yeah let's add gold because gold is also a safe haven asset right so in a risk on stocks aud cad nzd in a risk of bonds gold usd jp and chf but this is not written in stone guys but this is essentially the expectations that you'd have de depending on the risk profile that we are on and in this case in a risk on in a risk on vix is low right so in a risk on the most important thing vix like i said volatility index is low right and then you can change color let's make it white and then uh, on the risk off vix is high right because why because there's a high level of uncertainty and remember what i said uh the volatility index as well as stock market they go in opposite directions right so this is essentially what i wanted to break down to you guys that we have a market sentiment the market is always in a in a in a in a certain environment either risk on or either risk off investors are either willing to put on risk or willing to on or, or, or taking risk off the table right so whenever there's optimism and volatility is low then you know that we're in a risk on whenever there's there's uncertainty and volatility is high we know that we in a what in a risk off and there we look to buy the dollar jpy chf sell aud cad nzd so in a risk off you can look to sell aud jpy aud uh, aud usd cad jpy cad usd nzd usd nzd jpy that's how, that's where we're looking at currencies and then of course sell stock so sell the the your nasdaq your us 30 your s p 500 that is essentially the backstory that i wanted to give to you guys because i don't want to just give you information for the sake of giving it to you i need you to understand and be able to explain it now let's go on to the actual chart right so now let us go into a chart so you can see how you can actually use the volatility index to time your entries so if you go into the vix here's the volatility index i know it's not a, a clean looking chart uh this is the volatility index but essentially remember i said in term in times of uncertainty it spikes higher so as you can see this was 2020 when we had the recession uh the covid recession right or, pan or pandemic and then 2000 uh, 2018 we also had uh, i can't remember what it was exactly but we saw volatility spike higher but another recession that we have was around 2007 right 2007 2008 there was the Great Depression. Uh, yeah, here it was, right? So 2007, 2008, you can see how, how high it spikes during what? During recessionary times. You see how high it spikes during recessionary times, right? So that is when volatility is high. And during those periods, uh, okay, let me just do this so that I can actually show you what I mean, guys. Because remember, I said it goes in the opposite direction. So I've just locked my cursor here. Let me go into the monthly. I think it will be easier on the monthly to spot all these recessionary times so as you can see i've locked my cursor here so let's go on to indices right let's see if they went in the opposite direction so let's go on to nasdaq as you can see nasdaq spike lower obviously on the monthly it's just two monthly candles lower s p 500 this this was during the pandemic right during covid as you can see and then we had us 30 also lower right and then let's go back to 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 vix so i'm just giving you guys an indication of how of how markets behave based on what i've just explained to you risk on and risk off so if volatility spikes high of course you're expecting these to drop and then i said on the currency side so if volatility is high which means we are in a risk off that means that we should see aud usd go lower aud jpy go lower nzd usd nzd jpy go lower cad usd cad jpy go lower or usd cad essentially go higher right so if we look at cad jpy 
during the same time period as you can see you saw it drop lower this is the monthly time frame guys so this is not a 15 minutes it's a monthly you can see it drop lower uh aud jpy same thing it went lower nzd jpy same thing what it went lower right why because like i said these are commodity currencies right and they do not they only perform when the outlook is good because remember if the outlook is good then commodities will also do well they will also outperform right so that is why we have cat jpy aud jpy nzd jpy drop or become weaker whenever we are in a recessionary environment or in an in, in an in an environment of high uncertainty as you can see right now they they are at all-time highs if a recession were to kick in we would definitely see a drop in them right so this is the background story that i wanted to give you guys but that's not the main reason why i'm making the video the main reason why i'm making the video guys like i said was for you to be able to time your entries when it comes to indices this was just to show you how we implement vix on indices as well as currencies right moving forward you now have an understanding of risk on risk off and how you should position yourself based on which risk environment we are in if volatility is high you know that we are in a risk off if volatility is low we're in a risk on now let's get on to the actual trading of indices using fix right so how do you how do we time our entries right how do we time our entries we go on to the daily right remember like i said you know the direction based on fundamental now you just go on the daily time frame right so in the daily time frame you're gonna plot a 50 okay for you guys who might who might not be who might not see this clearly but on your trading view it's vix or volatility s p 500 index just search for that and you'll find this exact same chart that i'm using here right so just plot a 50 ema or moving average and then all you have to do if the direction based on your fundamentals what you're anticipating for the u.s economy is buy or you're expecting a positive outlook then we're looking to buy indices so in that case you need to see volatility index on the daily time frame cross and close above the 50 moving average and then you know that the market is in a pullback and then you can go onto your technical or onto your indices chart and look for a support in terms of buying or a demand remember guys like i said your technical analysis strategy doesn't really matter that much with whichever that you use or a trend line break whatever that you use as long as you nail the fundamentals down and what i'm showing you down right so we're gonna go through over a couple of examples right so as you can see on this i'm not sure if you guys can really see this um, you can see my cross here right okay let me unlock you can see my cross here right so let's let's start as most recently so as last year so this was around september 2023 as you can see this is what i mean the daily candle needs to close above the 50 ema or exponential moving average right so we closed here and then of course we understood that that that, that, that direction was already bullish here if you do if you're not sure about that watch the video that i titled uh, how to get ahead of 99 percent of retail traders we explained that in that video but here we are bullish right so now let us go to nasdaq and we can see that nasdaq was giving us a a pullback at that point that is what we wait for we wait for nasdaq to give us a pullback in the us 500 to give us a pullback or uh, us 30 to give us a pullback right when we have a bullish close on the daily that is if we are looking to buy nasdaq or looking to buy indices if we're looking to sell indices then the opposite applies on the vix we wait for the vix to close below what below the 50 ema on the daily time frame right so it's just the opposite guys remember they these these two move in opposite directions the vix and the and indices move in opposite directions right so it was around here and all you had to do at that point obviously i use the higher time frames the weekly and all of that you just need to find your level of uh support and resistance even if you go into the monthly whichever time frame that you use like I, and, and whichever strategy in terms of technical analysis like i always say guys it doesn't really matter that much if your direction is accurate based on fundamentals you could have used a line chart here and then you plot a support and resistance or you can plot them all the way around here it's up to you guys but what i'm trying to show you here is how you actually time your entries right then you could have waited for price to get here and then you buy let us go on to uh s p 500 right so it was a similar thing right s p 500 this is where i entered i had used 
a similar approach guys and like i say guys i'm not I, I never teach you something that i do not use or apply or that i've applied and seen that it works right so as you can see here this was a support and resistance uh this is in terms was a, a a retest a broken resistance now turn to support someone else could have said uh okay no this is a what this is an order block or it's a demand so like i say whatever strategy you use as long as you have the direction based on fundamentals then everything will click everything will make sense you know so this is what i'm trying to say to you guys you can see this this was the day or the week okay let's go into the daily time frame so so everything makes sense so on this day this was when the vix crossed above the 50 day moving average so before that you shouldn't have been bothering yourself about looking to buy s p 500 yes i know you want to trade every single day you want to try and milk the market but guys I'm, I'm trying to give you something that works long term something that works not only for today then it stops tomorrow but something that will work long term that works long term this will minimize a lot of losses for you if you wait for this to happen right so this would have been your opportunity then you would have gotten in and probably and, and bought like i did because this is when i bought uh let's let us see a us 30 if we had a similar thing as well similar thing as well on us 30 it was pulling back right and then it eventually went to a level of uh someone like i said someone would have said this is a what this is a demand or an order block someone could have gone onto the monthly time frame or looked at it from the monthly time frame or even from the weekly time frame and then you change switch to a line chart you look at a, a a break and retest of a support or resistance and you'd say this is it here based on the monthly whatever strategy that you use based on technical analysis guys i can never fault you for that right guys like i like i said in in in, in that video of getting ahead of 99 percent of retail traders guys you are good as a retail trader i know you are good sorry about that guys but i know guys as a retail trader like i've said you are good exceptionally good when it comes to technical analysis guys so i'm not gonna fault whatever strategy you use whether it's trend lines whatever it may be use that and it'll work for you guys so that is essentially what you do so all that i'm giving to you guys here is just wait for what wait for that pull back on the vix if you're expecting indices to go higher right just wait on the daily time frame wait for the pull back on the vix and then of course it went lower bef uh, after that and then it most recently also crossed and closed above the 50 day moving average right here so after this day it would have been on this day here right so it would have been on this day let us lock cursor let us check indices and nasdaq and see if it did not pull back you see it was already pulling back so these these are the times that you're looking for entries right here you could have done the very same thing right go into your go into your weekly go into your monthly or look for whatever support and resistance whatever it may be you could have looked at switch to a line chart and said this is a break and retest you know so guys when it comes to when it comes to technical analysis whatever you use guys will work right and of course based on entries like i say technical analysis is not that much of a big deal then you would have entered right let us look at s p 500 similar situation right it would have given you an option to enter and that's another thing guys you might have said oh but sanele i only entered here last year and i've missed all this move up going up or let's say you wouldn't have entered here and only got to enter here i missed this whole move but these are like i said this is high accuracy guys i'm minimizing losses for you i don't want you to be taking unnecessary losses this is the whole aim of doing this so that you can minimize losses right so this 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 is this is what you do then look at looking at us 30 it's a similar situation as well we had that pullback and then we had we saw price push higher right and you can do the same thing go 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 to either you're using your order blocks supply demand or you're using support and resistance break and retest simple right so you don't have to over complicate it and then of course let us you look at let us you can look at s p 500 for 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 example sake and then you can say okay sanele i've been waiting all this time and i only got an opportunity in january since october last year right i got in in october but then if you want to sort of day trade and another thing guys remember what i said in a 
in this case when indices are expected to go high volatility is low volatility is in reference to volatility in the actual market so if volatility in the actual market is low that means that you can day trade but do not expect to catch big moves during the day why because volatility is low that's also another reason why i started with explaining things first on the actual blackboard before getting to the actual chart right so that you have a picture of that so you Yes, you can day trade. Yes, you can catch these moves. But for you to maximize on the daily ranges or the daily moves, you need to over leverage because volatility is low in the market. So that is why in as much as you can moan and say, maybe I, I'm, I've missed all this move and I'm only getting in a couple of times, but the accuracy of it, number one. And number two, you don't have to leverage or over leverage your account to try and make up on that small blip of a move that happens on a daily why because volatility is low so once volatility is high then you can maximize on what on those big moves in a single day right so that's also another way that you need to operate and think uh and think along on in terms of how you should view the market how you should see the market right so this is how you do it but then if you're complaining about that and say no i want a day trade i want to do this and that it's still the same approach but in this case instead of using the daily time frame drop down to the four hour right drop down to the one hour and you and you're still waiting for the same thing right look at even even on the four hour it was it was only just okay let us unlock this so it was only just uh, around december 20 when we had a close above right or, or of the volatility index on the four hour so let us lock this and then let us go back to your indices right to see if you could have looked for opportunities there so it was around here right as you can see on nasdaq it was around here and eventually price gave a pullback after that before pushing higher right which was in line with what we what we what we're seeing right now but then you could have let us go back to the volatility index like i say if you want a day trade drop a time frame but don't necessarily go anything lower than one hour you can but then it will be up to you but then look at the one hour same thing wait for if you're looking to buy wait for a close above right so we had a close above here on the one hour so we had a close above on the one hour so let us unlock so that so that we can bring, bring back our cross here so around november 2023 so we would have been here so for all of those those guys who are like no i want a day trade i don't want a swing trade but remember volatility is low you're gonna have to force the market to move so you can't force the market to move so you're gonna have to over leverage so you can make try and make the most out of that small move that you're gonna get daily rather than you just waiting and being patient for the market to pull back then you just get that high 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 accuracy entry and time your entry and also low risk entry with a high with a high um with a high reward potential right so this is how you do it but if you want to day trade this this was an option for you instead of using the daily use the four hour use the one hour and wait for the same thing right and then if we go on to nasdaq let us see at the same time if okay let us let us go into the four hour guys to make this easier rather than using the the one hour uh, Okay, so it was around here right same pullback so okay in this case you could have waited for this pullback here you could have used the daily if you wanted to and looked for uh, it was around here right so it was around here so you could have used the daily here and wait and looked at news maybe this right and say to switch to a line chart break and retest whatever strategy you want to use but this is essentially what I'm trying to explain to you guys that this move or using the volatility index as your timer of when you look to enter on indices it's gonna help you a lot because they move in opposite directions and like that and like it said it is a measure if you go back to the example here okay it's still loading but it, it is essentially a measure of what of the of 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 of, of the stock market's expectation of volatility based on s p 500 index options and then we went on to break things down for you guys to understand why why we want to use the volatility index right so we, we broke things down for you guys so that you can understand 
why we want to use the volatility index how it applies in a risk on risk off and how it actually in, in what type of asset classes that it actually affects when it comes to the risk on environment when it comes to the risk of environment guys so that is also another thing that we looked at right so i just wanted to share this video with you guys so that you know that if you want to be good at trading indices want to be good at trading nasdaq us 30 s p 500 use the volatility index apply that 50 day uh move exponential moving average on your on your on your vix chart if you want to day trade use the one hour close if you want to swing trade and and more like uh, medium to long term positions and catch bigger moves by risking by not taking on as much risk or uh, having a high level of uncertainty then you can use what you can use the daily closes above what above the actual wallet above the above the 50 day move guys so this is essentially how you approach it guys this is essentially how you do all of this you know so then it will be easier when you actually come onto a chart you know that okay if i'm looking to buy nasdaq then i just need to wait for a pullback on the on on, on the vix and wait for a close above the day 50 day moving average and then and then at that point i can look at my support and with my broken support my broken resistance turn to support or look at my order block look at my demand look at my trend line break whatever you use guys use that but as long as you know that the vix is what you use to actually time the entries when it comes to we, when you should look to buy when you should look to sell and and not be caught up and not be caught up trying to enter as the market keeps moving up and getting low risk entries and all of that being stopped out and then the market moves in in the direction we had anticipated it to move in instead of just what sitting on your hands and waiting so this is essentially guys what i wanted to show you guys in terms of how you can actually time the market or your entries and how you can actually get good at trading nasdaq us 30 s p 500 you will, you will actually be better than most people who 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 who, who have nasdaq at the end of their names on social media because i know majority of them don't don't know this or they are not aware of this but if you apply this i assure you you you'll have a higher accuracy rate compared to them and it's not about comparing yourself to anyone but for your benefit i know this will work for you because it works for me and like i said guys i, do, I, I don't just want to give you guys something that doesn't work or give you guys surface level for the sake of giving it to you i wanted to break it down for you so that you can understand what is vix where it comes from how it affects the different uh, asset classes in the market uh, how it affects your stock market how it affects bonds how it affects currencies right so even even in the sense of currencies and as much as we're using it predominantly for indices because they go in the opposite directions but when it comes to currencies once you see volatility shooting higher there are ways to calculate volatility but we're not here for that we won't get into the details of that that i do more in depth uh, when it comes to fundamental analysis we're gonna looking at that as you can see risk on risk off that is how you apply it and then when it comes to currencies you know if volatility is high you're expecting the dollar japanese yen and the swiss franc to benefit and vice versa if volatility is low so that is what i wanted to share with you guys and as always if you found value from this video like the video if you sub if you if you learn something valuable as well subscribe and of course share the video and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when i drop another video this you can take and apply immediately right now once you click off from this video you can apply this on your on your trading and wait for opportunities uh, that are to come right or even back test this if you do not believe me go back to 2020 when the market was still falling and in that case see it when if when 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 uh, the volatility index actually closed below the 50 day moving average did it not give you an opportunity to get on a sell uh on on your, on your indices even as early as 2022 beginning of 2022 when we saw indices falling because interest rates had started going up back test that part as well if you do not believe me based on what i've shown you but this works i use it i'm in a very good buy position on on s p 500 and you and most of you guys have seen it 
from the lows right here and I'm still holding right and I used this in conjunction with fundamentals to actually enter my trade to actually enter my position my position so I'm showing you guys something that I'm using something that works and something that you can also apply immediately and of course don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell and I'll see you guys in another video and let me know in the comments if you found this very useful and if you've actually started using it let me know how it goes